In this video, I'm going to be starting up this 1974 Kawasaki Z1B engine on the floor, out of the bike. So I'm going to fit the carbs, do the timing, check it over and then crank it up and hopefully she'll run. This engine is from a 1974 Kawasaki Z1B 900. I've had a good look around it and I can't see any evidence it's ever been stripped down. So what I'm going to do is take it around the side of the house and give it a good clean off with some bike cleaner to see what we've got underneath the mess and the grime. I use a stiff brush and some spray on pink bike cleaner and it's coming up really nice. It was mainly covered in dirt rather than corrosion and it's all coming off with a brush. With all the dirt removed, I rinse it off with a hose and it's looking brilliant. So I put it back on my trolley, take it back round onto the patio, give it a wipe down and let it dry in the afternoon sun. Hello. Hello, is that power? Hello, Phil. Morning, morning, Alan. How are you doing? Hey, I've got this Z1 engine. All my inlet rubbers are completely perished. Have you got any in stock? Yeah, we can sort that out for you. I'll get one in post for you straight away today. Great. That'd be brilliant. Thanks, Phil. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye-bye. First thing in the morning, the doorbell goes. It's a packet from Zed Power. It must be my carburetor rubbers. I'm really excited. So I get out my Swiss Army knife and cut it open to have a look. Oh, they look really good. They're all soft. They're going to be just perfect. The old ones were so badly worn. I've already rebuilt the carburetors, so I just check they fit and they push on lovely with a nice snap, which is perfect. With the engine all dry, I fit the four inlet rubbers and they look amazing. With the last screw tightened, I pick up the carbs and put them onto the inlet stubs and they snap on just perfect. I tighten the four clamps and then take out the spark plugs. With the plugs out, I was pleased to see they were dry and not oily. That's a good sign the engine was running in reasonable condition the last time it ran, 40 years ago. The next thing I'm going to do is check the ignition timing. So I remove the points cover and wow, I am really amazed how clean it is inside. All the cadmium plate is shiny, the points are nice, all the screws are mint, even the condensers at the bottom are still shiny with their original plated surface. I am well pleased with that. I use a bit of fine Abronet cloth, this is 600 grade, in between the points to clean off any oxidation from 40 years of storage, otherwise you won't get a good electrical connection and you get a bad spark. After you use the Abronet, it's really important that you use a piece of cardboard to go back and forth to remove any fine particles that are left that will prevent the points from touching and making a good connection. With both sets of points cleaned, I check the gap with the feeler gauge and it's 14 thou, which is just perfect. So the next thing I'm going to do is check the actual ignition timing with my battery and a light. I take a wire from the positive side of the battery to a bulb and then connect it up to the green wire from the points, which is for cylinders two and three. And then the other wire from the battery just goes to earth and the light should come on when the points are closed. And here you can see, as I open the points, the light goes out and when the points close, the light comes on. I turn the crankshaft clockwise using a 17mm spanner and as the indicator lines up with cylinders 2 and 3, the points just open and the light goes out, indicating that the timing is perfect. I then checked cylinders 1 and 4 and they were perfect as well. So the next thing I had to do was lubricate the felt pad for the points cam and I also put a bit of oil on the pivots just to make sure. Then I could replace the points cover. With the timing checked, I can now replace the spark plugs with four new ones.
To complete the ignition system, I need to find some coils. I'm pretty sure I've got some in my shed, so I go up to have a good old rummage. Here we go, a pair of Kawasaki coils. They're a bit dirty, but I think they'll clean up okay. I pull off the old plug caps because they're really loose. I'm going to trim back the leads and make them fit nicely. And then I do some brake cleaner to get rid of all the grease and grime in a little tray. But Charlie Weaver's getting sprayed, so I have to move him quickly because he's just having a drink. With the coils cleaned, I make a little tiny bracket out of some aluminium so I can bolt them to the cam cover on the engine to stop them rattling around if the engine starts and then go outside into the garden and fit them to the engine. I fit the coils onto the top of the engine and then connect up the spark plug leads. And then the wires go down to the points behind the carburetors and connect up just here with the green and the black wire. I connect up a red wire to the positive side of the coils and a black wire to the negative side of the engine and these will be connected to the battery to make it run. This is a starter motor wire which I might use to try the starter on the electric start but I'll probably just use the kick start. I check the oil level in the side glass and notice it's a little bit low so I thought I'd better just top it up. That's better, it didn't take very much, and now it's at the top level. Well, it's first thing Sunday morning. I really can't start this engine in my garden. It's so quiet. So I'm going over to my mate Henry's over in the Cotswolds. He's got a big farm, and we can start it up there where there's no worry about upsetting the neighbours. I loaded the engine into my pickup truck and took it over to Henry's, and the first thing we had to do was fit the header pipes. So why have you come to my gap? Over at Henry's, because it's a wide open space with no people complaining, because where I live is a little bit compact with people. I don't upset my neighbours. <laughs> we won't be upsetting any neighbours, let me tell you. Hey, Milliard, the madness of Milliard here. Look at the size of the exhaust pipes. These are off uh, GPZ 1100 B2. Are they? Um, so they're all Motad 4 into 1. So they're actually slightly larger in diameter than they should be, which means it's going to be louder. With the header pipes fitted, it was time to put some fuel into the carburetors. Do I have to hold that? No, it's okay. So what you do is just get on the truck and kickstart it. Well, yeah, basically. <laughs> That's what I was throwing out. That's a bit of spare fuel out there. Well, first good sign is the carbs aren't leaking. There's no leakage from any of these bits here, which is good. That's just the breather. That'll be blowing hot air up. I'll stick that down there. Right, so the next thing to do is connect up the battery. I'm actually quite, quite optimistic it's going to run, so I'm actually going to put earplugs in. Oh, are you now? Do you want some earplugs? No, you're right. It might actually just sort of uh, enlighten me a bit more. I don't normally do this, but I've just got this feeling it's going to be loud. It feels very tranquil and quiet here today. <laughs> it is Millie normally until you turn up. Right, and what I'm going to do is connect up my lith lightweight lithium ion battery. Last time you did this was in his shed, in his garage, wasn't it? With your six cylinder Z1. And that had no pipes on it at all, am I right? No pipes. No pipes at all. So this has got to be a little bit better. Here he goes, look at him. Eh? Choke on. Yeah. And bit of throttle. <laughs> never, never been run since 
totally mad. Aren't you? That's, that's, I don't think I need to do the cards, that's spot on. Mate, it, it idles beautifully. Yeah. I set them up with little bits of wire and by blowing through them last night, listen to the hiss. What are you doing now? Well, we can run it without the headers to see what it sounds like in comparison. Face, man, that's what makes Milliard smile. Hey, eh? no headers. Uh, just got to find a bike to put it in now. I think it's a shade lean, but it's on open pipes with no air filters. Okay, so it's, um... Mate, it just sounds absolutely gorgeous. It's nice and so, warm. so, how would you sum up today's experiment, Al? Unbelievable. <laughs> I did think it would run, but I wasn't sure how well it would run and how quickly it would start because sometimes it'd take a feral kick. But that was just like it just stopped running yesterday. Well, ch well chuffed. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And coming soon, episode three of the RC374 build. In this episode, I'll be starting the engine on the bench for the first time.